In this video, you're going to learn how to use a Bunsen burner safely and properly. This is a Bunsen burner. It allows you to heat materials in the lab both quickly and efficiently. Because you'll be working with an open flame, it can be dangerous, so I'll start by going over some safety rules. All long hair should be tied back, and you shouldn't wear any loose or bulky clothing. You should never heat inflammable materials on the Bunsen burner. Volatile and inflammable materials like ethers and alcohols can combust in heat, so it's definitely too dangerous for the Bunsen burner. When handling the barrel of the Bunsen burner, it's important to hold it at the bottom. When the flame is lit, it can get very hot any higher up, so doing this regularly will help you to remember to do it. You should never leave your Bunsen burner unattended when it's lit. You should make sure you're aware of where all emergency exits and emergency gas shutoffs are, as well as all safety equipment before you begin using your Bunsen burner. Now that you know all the safety precautions, you can begin to light your Bunsen burner. The first step is to attach the hose to both the Bunsen burner and to the gas line. Make sure that you attach it to the gas line and not an air or a water line. You'll now want to turn the barrel clockwise to completely close the air inlet. Do this until there's resistance. Now turn it back slightly so just a small amount of air is let through. You'll also want to close the gas needle valve located underneath the Bunsen burner. Do this by turning it completely counterclockwise. Leave this closed for now and turn on the gas. You will know the gas tap is open when the handle lines up with the tap. You'll now want to turn the gas needle valve clockwise slightly to open it. This lets a small amount of gas through you should be able to hear a faint hissing, which lets you know that the gas is coming out of the burner. The next step is to take your flint and generate sparks over your Bunsen burner. You may want to practice this a few times before you turn the gas on, just like I'm doing. To do this, you want to push up and across. Hold the flint just above the Bunsen burner and generate the sparks. You should now have a flame that's yellow-orange in color. To get a taller flame, turn the gas needle valve clockwise. And likewise, to get a shorter flame, turn it counterclockwise. Once you have your flame at a sufficient height, you'll want to adjust the heat. To make a hotter flame, you'll want to turn the barrel. Do this by holding it at the base. To increase the heat, you'll want to turn the barrel counterclockwise. This should change the color of your flame from the yellow-orange to blue. Be careful when handling the barrel at this point because it can get very hot. Only handle it at the bottom. You'll also want to make sure not to let too much air in because this can blow out your flame. You'll know your flame is ready to use when it's dark blue in color with a darker inner core. You'll want to hold your item just above the inner core to be in the hottest location. When you've finished using your butts and burner, there's a correct procedure for turning it off safely. First, you'll want to turn your flame back yellow by letting more air in. Do this by turning the barrel, holding the bottom in the clockwise direction. Now you'll want to turn your gas needle valve off completely by turning it counterclockwise. At this point, the flame should go out. Lastly, turn off the gas tap. You've now finished turning off your Bunsen burner, but make sure to let it cool before putting it away. Using a Bunsen burner can be intimidating to even some of the most experienced chemists. But if you follow the instructions and safety protocols that I've taught you, you can always make sure that you proceed with the utmost safety precautions.